You are worthy of trust. Casting grounds, lifting, bowing our is what we come We are casting crowns. We are lifting our And we will rise, it's in your name. Quicken my understanding. Isaiah 11 says, shall make you of quick understanding. Quick understanding. Make me of quick understanding. Spirit of the living God, grant us understanding of the word, open our minds, and supply the grace to walk in the truths that we will learn. We have come before you. You represent the wisdom of God to us. We are not rebels to your word. Teach us. Open our hearts. Grant us understanding. Grant us illumination. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Good evening. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's always my joy to bring us the word of the Lord. The Bible says, I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower. And I will see what the Lord would say. Every time spent in his presence gives us access to wisdom. Wisdom. The spirit of wisdom is the dimension of the Holy Spirit responsible for bringing prophecy to pass. When God speaks, the dimension of the Holy Spirit that goes forth is the spirit of wisdom. He begins to coordinate people and circumstances that make for a manifestation of that which has been spoken. I sensed in my spirit even while I prepared for this meeting that there will be a mighty and uh, not impartation but tonight's communication will be under the strong influence of the spirit of wisdom. Hallelujah. Every time God is speaking there are many ways that he speaks but when the spirit of wisdom is operating on a man communicating the word of the Lord then it's important to listen. Every time the wisdom of God comes, it means that there is something about his intention for your life that has been spoken about that he desires to be made manifest. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All the dimensions of the Holy Spirit revealed in the Bible, they don't work anyhow. They accomplish specific things. Hallelujah. Jesus will give you all the praise. I want to appreciate our passion for the word. I have noticed personally 
that the Lord is multiplying and increasing our desire and our appetite, not just for Bible study, but for revelation that works. I think that when your heart is opened to know the truth, it says, and ye shall know the truth. And if it is really the truth you know, there will be an evidence. That truth can make you free. Hallelujah. It will make you free. So you check the liberty you are experiencing in every area of your life. That is your liberty is what justifies it validates whether or not the information you are receiving is truth. Because if it is truth, then an aspect of your life should experience that dimension of liberty. If I catch the truth about finances, I should experience that liberty. Is that true? If I catch the truth over my victory in Christ, I should see it demonstrated by um, my ability to rise beyond the oppressions of darkness. If I catch the truth concerning my health, it should show. Is that true? If I catch the truth concerning whatever aspect of life. So all you need to do is to look at your life. The areas where you still remain a slave and, a, and in bondage is a, is a picture of the dimension of truth that is yet to be real to you. And ye shall know, not have. You can have it forever, but it is the day you know it. Ye shall know the truth. And tonight, the Lord is coming with his truth again. Truly, when you have this revelation, you will love the house of God. The house of God is the place of truth. Is that true? Yes. The place of truth. So I expect that by the time we are sharing the grace tonight, someone will walk rejoicing. Because something that may have kept you bound for long, all of a sudden you find out that this is the revelation that is needed. Truth. So if you are, have been a faithful follower of God and his word for a long time, there should be some level of liberty in your life that is compelling enough to want someone to listen to what you are listening to. You can't claim you are around truth for an appreciable period of time and then every area of your life is helplessly in bondage. No, sir. That means you've been around the environment of truth, but you have not listened carefully or engaged diligently. We have learned that being around the truth does not bring transformation. It doesn't even bring liberty. The truth personified Jesus, the word himself. There were people who lived with him and ate with him, yet they did not change. Being around the vicinity of truth does not guarantee liberation. It doesn't guarantee transformation. Are we together now? Lord, help me to understand and receive the truth. Can you pray that one prayer? Help me understand. and ye shall know the truth and the truth that you know that you have received that you have engaged will set you free hallelujah praise the lord we have been examining, we started right from last year, um, what I would summarize as success systems, because I believe that is the will of God for us to rise to excel. And the Lord has been opening us up to all the dimensions that are prerequisites for a life that becomes a validation of everything Jesus said in the Bible. It is my goal that we excel in every aspect of our life. Not just in one area at the expense of another. Hallelujah. And the Lord helped us to share a lot of things. And I just feel stirred in my heart to still share tonight along the side of relationships. Because I believe that um, our success in life is based on... On relationships I have grown to appreciate the power of relationships hallelujah 
I will pick an aspect of it to share today and then he will bless us and then we'll also get into, you know, when the season, February usually are seasons when ministries focus on aspects of relationship, not necessarily marriage and love, but then I think it's valid for all times. If you do not understand relationships, you will never prosper in life. You will never be victorious. It is true. It's a fact. In all your knowing, in all your understanding, no matter your business acumen, no matter your educational qualification, no matter your level of spirituality, if you do not understand God's system of relationships, then you stand a chance to being a failure and a frustrated personality. I've taught us here that the easiest way to succeed in life is through relationships. Your relationship is a stream of income. Your relationship, greater than any invention, the only thing that validates invention is because men are there to appreciate and reward it. This is the world of men. You have to understand men. I watch with shock and wonder how we get whipped over issues that should give us cheap victories because we ignore the systems of God. The easiest way to succeed in life is through relationships. I told us that relationships are currencies. They can purchase anything money can buy. There are seven currencies we use to purchase realities in this realm. That's the lowest and the seventh of them is money financial resources there are many other currencies that are used integrity is currency godliness is currency the anointing is currency relationship is currency anything money can buy relationship can pay for it anything the only thing that gives value money or money value is that there is a hand to collect it and reward you one person can open a hundred doors of opportunity for you sometimes we really don't need so many people in our lives in terms of favor and open doors you just need one person sent by god and will open a door i've taught us that who likes you can make all the difference in your success god has trained us to understand that we do not ignore men and prosper you exalt God above men, but you ignore men. Every prophecy will remain barren in the realm of the spirit. Even God had to look for men to cooperate with him. And he still does till today. So who likes you can make a difference. A king loved a village girl and she became a queen. A king hated a queen and she lost her place. God so loved men and they became redeemed. It matters who likes you. Everything reproduces on the basis of relationship. Everything. Everything in life. Your success, your failure, your spirituality. Everything in life reproduces. Adam, where are thy? I heard your voice, but I hid because I was naked. What relationship entered between us to make for that? Who told you? It didn't say what happened. Who told you? Your neglecting my laws have been because another individual, another personality was introduced. Everything reproduces on the basis of relationships. Your resources in life your finances, your access will always come out of relationships. Your resources will always come out of relationships. I'm just reading with you what I, as a preamble, favor is who God has made to like you and their willingness to communicate benevolence to you. Favor is who God has made to like you. It's amazing how your life can change when the right people like you. It's true. The Bible is full of heathenistic kings 
who fell in love with certain individuals like Pharaoh to Joseph and all of a sudden their lives changed like Daniel in Babylon two men had this, a similar dream and for one person it meant the favor of the king he was restored as the wine presser for another person it was death and they hung him and the birds of the air ate him up but I've taught us again that relationships don't maintain themselves this is the most important part of my conversation relationships don't maintain themselves the parties involved must commit to maintaining it any kind it doesn't just have to be love relationships marriage or this no no any kind business relationships your relationship between you and the holy spirit your relationship between you and your friends you and parents love relationships marriages business career relationships no relationship maintains itself the parties involved doesn't matter how many they must commit to maintaining it and the holy spirit stirred in my heart to teach us a dimension today of relationships that i think will really really bless us there are not many times when i stand and i tell you that a teaching will bless you if tonight's teaching does not bless you something is really wrong with your understanding hallelujah i title what i'm about to share what is love understanding relationships what is love this this is not about um love relationships necessarily at all it's, it's more serious than that it's a subject that god has is something that god has reveal to me that i think the body of christ needs to understand what is love jeremiah chapter 31 i love i love verse 3 i love your presence i love i love I love your presence. I love, I love. I love you, Jesus. I love, I love. I love your presence. It says, The Lord had appeared of old unto me, saying, Please read with me yea i have loved thee with an everlasting love therefore with loving kindness have i drawn you this is god speaking i have loved you with an everlasting love the basis of my relating with you is love it took my loving kindness to draw you to myself to receive of my benevolence now it is this love that we want to consider what is love john chapter 3 verse 16 very popular scripture many of us have not read it for a long time because of our pride of believing we know what it says john 3 16 for god read the first the third and the fourth word one to read so loved so loved that's the key word forget about what he did later on the foundation for anything that was done so loved i have loved you with an everlasting love and in my loving kindness i have drawn you to myself and the bible says for god so loved the world whatever he did is a subject of another day the most important thing you can say he gave his only begotten son because he so loved the world are you seeing that now the foundation for his benevolence and his sacrifice was the extent of his love love is a word that is used 
greatly in our world today and in our society we attach it to our affection affinity for things you hear people say i love you i love my car i love my boss i love my wife i love my husband i love my children i love jesus i love koinonia is that true and so we it's a word it's not a word that is new or strange even foreign even little children will tell you they have an idea we have always associated love with something that is positive but i just want to help us because knowing this will turn every aspect of our lives around not just relationships finances our work with the holy spirit and so on and so forth is a word that in many respects is carelessly used many people do not understand the gravity of what they are saying i love you or i love your shirt i love this phone i love this book i love jesus christ i love my wife my husband i love my father and for many of us and i think largely our society um societally speaking we are victims of this every time we mention the word love usually the scope of our understanding please listen the scope of our understanding is hinged around the emotions or attachment we use the word love from a layman's perspective many people just use it to explain the goodness the positive attachment is that true that they have towards a person or towards a thing so for many people the scope of love is just emotions or a word we have invented to explain it feelings feelings so when you feel good about a thing or a person and you are asked to articulate what is happening to you you say i love that thing i love this flower why you say because it is beautiful the design made it pleasant to my eyes and then i have a positive affinity towards it and i call it love but you see i want to share with us a number of things that will help us ready number one true love is not emotions true love is not emotions it's not feelings now don't get me wrong there is an emotional component when you are talking about love there has to be an emotional component but love is not emotion if the entire scope of your definition of love for a person or for a thing is just an attempt to express the emotional affinity towards that thing then you are very limited please listen there is a lot of trouble in marriages in relationships in carnality attachment to things because of this one definition feelings the word feeling is a very is a psychological word it's a word that was invented to explain your psychological disposition at a given time it's called feelings an expression of your psychological disposition so if i i am not feeling all right because of a for instance a stomach upset you ask me what's wrong and i tell you i'm feeling sick is that true if someone annoys me and i am not happy you ask me what was wrong with you i say i'm feeling bad so the word feeling is a word that attempts to describe your psychological disposition at a given time is god helping us tonight please make sure you are listening everywhere online outside because one of the biggest unbecomings of people is their vulnerability to feelings for when you become a victim of feelings both your relationship with god and your relationship with life will be shattered because you see feelings listen love is not a feeling love is not emotion love can and should create feelings true love should 
create feelings don't get me wrong true love should create emotions we'll discuss that later without without emotions and without feelings you cannot be committed towards a person or a project I preach and we run this ministry and do what God is doing because much more than an instruction from God I'm emotionally connected to what I'm doing and therein lies my passion for the work I'm doing without feeling without emotion there is no basis for being passionate but love is not feeling are we together love can create feelings but it's not feelings we know from life and biology that feelings can be products of chemical reactions hormones feelings can be products of whatever it is all kinds of um, physiological things that happen within a human being that is the reason why love that is based on feelings should not be trusted is that true when you build your love life based on emotions and feelings you will never be able to sustain that's why many people do not have the strength to push a business idea to the end they say they love it because the idea reflected a positive emotion to them is that true and so they believe that they love the idea but then when another idea came to them higher and better than that one all of a sudden their loyalty to that idea went and it is easier for it to be a thing it is terrible when it becomes a person is that true we live in a world where our definitions of love are based on feelings so when you feel good about a person you say i love that person and for many of us now i say this with honor we have watched films we have been exposed to books and we have even been mentored by personalities who have been so inclined to emotions and the entire scope of their definition of love is that it must always give you a feeling a positive feeling and if for any reason the feeling is not positive then it is not love that is not an accurate teaching is God helping us so if I say come I love David Dam what for many of us are saying uh, what we are trying to say is that my sight of David Dam it doesn't matter what parameters I put together to arrive at my idea of love what I'm attempting to say is that the presence of David Dam creates a positive emotional um, experience for me is that true and then i can be fooled into thinking that just because at the moment i felt positive about him i love him then tomorrow i now see another side of david dam that communicates an experience that does not go well with my idea of happiness is that true and all of a sudden i change my mind and say david dam i no longer love you remember that's what you did to the shirt you now throw in your house see how much you loved it when you bought it beautiful shirt my god and you wore it and you were happy something about that shirt made you feel happy and excited and you used the wrong word you called it love and now because the shirt began to fade or tear it started falling your hand and you no longer were confident about it because it no longer created that disposition confess right now what did you do to the shirt isn't it amazing how your attitude towards that shirt has changed you look at it in your wardrobe and have no pity for that shirt think of how much you were bargaining just a few months ago please reduce one thousand reduce five thousand and this is the shirt now but you said you loved the shirt remember when you dried it and for whatever reason you didn't find it you search who took my shirt but now the shirt is right there love what exactly is love
feelings are always based I wrote something here feelings are temporary dispositions based on something we consider pleasant feelings write it down feelings are temporary dispositions based on something we consider pleasant about someone or an object so if David Dam sings watch this I give David Dam a mic and he has a beautiful voice now when he raises that voice his flawlessness his vocal discipline his artistry the ability to coordinate himself musically sounds pleasant to me that gives me a basis for feeling right about David Dam is that correct and now I may be tempted to call that feeling love it remains love for as long as David Dam is singing what if he's sleeping what is the name of the experience the difference between singing and snoring they all make sounds one is coordinated one is not so this, they are all coming out from the same person that's the interesting thing all coming out from the same personality now one is coordinated please understand what i'm teaching you and then it is pleasant to you and he becomes likable all of a sudden you are drawn emotionally based on something now most of us may not admit that that's what is drawing us is that true and then the person now snores for instance and then that experience does not go well with your disposition and you begin to lose that fervor our world is in danger of losing it if we do not understand what love is I foresee that if we do not know what love is many marriages will break many relationships will not even exist many businesses will never grow to be big enough many ministries many leaders will not be able to rise because of this mistake of feelings building anything on just feelings and emotion is a guarantee for failure and frustration please hear what i'm saying building anything at all just based on feelings and emotion is a guarantee for failure and frustration when you build a business on feeling when you build a relationship on feeling when you build marriage on feeling when you build your walk with god on feeling when you build your spiritual growth process on feeling that's what makes a lot of believers start feeling bad i used to feel the presence of god in a way when i'm about to climb the stage i feel that thing when i feel it i know god is there and right now i'm about to pray for sick people and i don't seem to feel it and they believe god is not there with me because we have been trained we don't ignore feelings but feeling is not love feeling has brought a lot of people into trouble there are marriages that are in trouble today because of the mistake of feeling listen carefully there are relationships today that are in shambles because of feeling there are businesses there are careers there are people today who are in geographic regions that they should never be ask them what happened they say i felt so there are people who should never be close to certain personalities there are people who should never be involved in certain businesses it's like an emotional rampage feelings they drive us up and down and so we begin to vacillate based on whatever disposition we have at the moment when a revelation sounds good to you ah, this is wonderful and then you love the revelation so you say then the day you understand the gravity of that revelation and it does not go well with you you throw it away love is not feelings is God helping us there are many things in life that have capacity please look up there are many things in life that have capacity of creating positive emotional experiences for us looks can create that you know that 
when you see a guy or a lady or whatever individual or a thing once it is good looking it can create a positive experience for you education when you see someone who is well learned someone who has been able to acquire certifications of all kinds they have a way of creating a positive disposition is that true um appearance when you see someone looking sharp and looking nice beautiful and handsome when i stepped in and i saw our worship team they were all looking gorgeous wonderful people right from outside i saw our ushers too they were looking beautiful i had a positive disposition towards them are you following me now orientation when you see someone who is exposed vast intelligent he has a great command of his intellect well developed understanding about several aspects of life and the person has an opportunity to articulate his understanding before you naturally naturally you will be drawn towards the person there are other things like wealth finances finances have the capability of creating pleasant experiences why because they are able to be exchanged for a solution you desire you can exchange money for a solution that you desire could be medically could be spiritually you can use money to buy a bible you can use money to move from being a tenant to a landlord it can give you a lot of options godliness and spirituality when you find out that someone has a very high level of understanding with god that disposition can cause pleasantness but none of those things in themselves equate to love is god helping us because you see many of our marriages many of our relationships many of our businesses are hinged on physical things that were pointed out and used as references to mean what we call today love so when you meet the gentleman and say why do you love this lady he says because she is beautiful or because she has character or because she did whatever it is why do you love this gentleman he said he's responsible he loves god doesn't run around he's well cultured and he's visionary those things look very sincere and they are but that's not love are we together why do you love this intelligent entrepreneur oh this guy is very sharp his business acumen is sound the result he has has to show for it why do you love this course you are studying i love it because i was told there is an opportunity there i love it because my father tried to study it and it didn't work now you think that those things mean love they are positive don't get me wrong but they are wrong foundations for love because if your foundation is based on those things there will be serious trouble how many of you have seen an old man and an old woman maybe the old woman maybe 65 to 70 years and her old husband is wrinkled sitting on a wheelchair and you see them hold their hands and say we love ourselves talk to me intelligent people we feel emotionally drawn to ourselves is that what you believe they are saying it couldn't be we make a fool of ourselves because of the impulsive nature of our lives which has been a derivative of our idea about love that every time i have a positive disposition towards a thing or a person then I love the thing or the person. And whenever that positive feeling is not there, we now say, I do not love the person. That's not God's idea. That's not the definition of love. Hallelujah. Mm. The Bible says those that God loves, he chastises. How do you, how do you equate chastening with love? impulsive marriages impulsive businesses impulsive relationships 
impulsive career pathways and all these mood swings that come in life are products of dependence on feelings to make destiny decisions there are people i remember talking to a lady one uh, or was it a gentleman one day and he came and met me he said i want to read a course i said why he said because i like the name that's exactly what we're talking about are we together chemical engineering <laughs> architecture neurosurgeon aeronautic engineer you know so the name is, is is charismatic and we do not understand the gravity of what is involved and we subscribe for things that we start regretting from day one is that true many people have been whipped by the sad reality that they were not ready for what they subscribed for this happens in relationships it happens in businesses listen if you listen to what i'm teaching you tonight i promise you you will walk out here happy and you will live happy as far as relationships are concerned feelings can be deceptive and are not an accurate measure of love write it down feelings can be deceptive feelings all kinds feelings can be deceptive and are not an accurate measure of love ask any married man and married woman ask any mother and her children ask every father and the children ask any leader and his subordinates they will tell you that if you depend on feelings as an index to measure love you will be deceived many times there are times that you are having the greatest manifestation of the presence of god in your life and you will not feel nothing but at those times your relationship and work with god are to incredible proportions but because you have programmed yourself into believing that because you felt his presence and he shook your body that meant you were receiving an impartation how many people walk out of miracle services angry because they did not have a feeling they expected to fall down is the noise maker who was sitting close to them that was not even prepared in his spirit who was falling up and down and they go back feeling pained and disappointed and say lord you mean you watch me like this fasting i didn't even break and this guy who was gossiping and making noise from praise and worship he was already on the ground we convinced ourselves that because there was no feeling that accompanied your experience that your senses could relate with you didn't receive anything it's the reason why many people don't get filled with the holy spirit because they are waiting for feelings feelings can be deceptive and are not an accurate measure of love are feelings wrong no are emotions wrong no but our society many of you seated today looking at me are depending on a feeling to show you your wife you are depending on a feeling to show you your husband you are depending on a feeling to love your wife if you're married or a feeling to love your husband you are depending on a feeling to serve god you are depending on a feeling to believe that you are loved in your department you are you are depending on a feeling feelings are deceptive very deceptive before i tell you what love is i want to show you a scripture that blessed me dimensions of true love let's discuss that ephesians chapter 3 please from verse 17 and 18 it's amazing how paul gives us his exegesis on the subject of love very strange communication that came from paul and let's see what he's saying paul said that christ may dwell in your hearts by faith look at me listen that ye being rooted and grounded in love now paul is confusing us here paul is giving us an idea you know he's using agricultural terminologies but this is not where i'm going verse 18 he says may be able to comprehend with all the saints read on with me what is the number one 
the breadth number two the length number three the depth number four the height so love has these dimensions there is breadth there is length there is depth there is height have you experienced these dimensions in your definition of what you call love if i ask you what is the breath of love and when should it be used because it's in the bible if i ask you what is the length of love and when should it be used because all these dimensions have their relevance remember he's teaching us to grow in the fullness of god who is love and he's fragmenting this dimensionally and he's saying that love has breadth and length and depth and height which one of the four do you know when you say love which of them do you refer to my brother when you say i love that lady which of this is it the breadth the length the depth when you say i love jesus which of them because paul is saying if that thing you are doing or know is love it must have breath listen carefully it must have length it must have depth thank you media it must have height believers lovers remember we love god and love ourselves what is the name of what we have been doing with respect to this i love you i love my car and paul says that thing you are talking there are dimensions the first dimension write it down i want to give you the four dimensions the lord revealed this to me and it changed my life it really did if these four dimensions are not captured in your idea of love then never talk about it these four dimensions i'm about to describe for you if they are not captured all four must be captured for it to be called love three over four in this equation is still f it must be four over four to be called god's idea the dimensions of love ready number one passion the first dimension of love is passion there is no love if it cannot be expressed in passion that's why i told you that there is a place for feelings it's only that feelings is not the entire scope please follow me in this teaching god is going to be revealing to many of us the mistakes we have been making whether in love relationships even in marriages and our work with god and businesses and relationship among believers around passion what is passion a strong or extravagant fondness of something when you are strongly fond of something it can be said you are passionate about that person or that thing what is passion sorry i'll hurry up you can get the teachings enthusiasm or desire for someone or something your passion for a person or a thing is measured by your enthusiasm your desire for something you cannot say you love a person or you love a thing and intrinsically there is no desire passion is called an intense enthusiasm compelling desire even admiration qualifies to be called passion write this down the proof that you are passionate about a person or a thing is pursuit 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 is the proof of passion when you love someone and you love something you are willing to be vulnerable enough to pursue that personality to pursue that idea there cannot be passion when there is an ashamedness for pursuit towards god towards men 
there are many relationships and many marriages many business ideas that do not have passion attached so the individuals they may say that they love this um, line of business but I do not see pursuit they may say I love this lady I love this guy but there is no desire for pursuit many say I love Jesus I love the things of God but there is no pursuit the first dimension of love that must be at work in your life is pursuit Psalm 8 please quickly let's look at God himself demonstrating this dimension of love Psalm 8 and verse 3 this is the psalmist in shock and awe as to why the God of the heavens with all the dexterity of heaven will still look down at man remember the Bible said for God so loved the world I have loved you we are not studying love from any relationship expert we are studying love directly from the one who invented it himself because many people have carved out i have great honor and respect for people authorities that god has used in the area of love and relationship but there is a deception that is destroying the body of christ every angry person comes up with a book and any idea of what they believe and begin to mentor young guys and young ladies and we are destroying marriage visions dreams relationships because of wrong templates that have been communicated so let's go to God how did God express passion this is what the psalmist saw that made him wonder he said God is it that you cannot do without man you threw your pride on the ground your throne is not enough for you you look at a man that is so godless and doesn't love you he said when i consider the heavens do you know what he's saying lord you are not dull you made the heavens without pillars the works of your fingers can't you invent another thing to replace that man the moon and the stars which thou has ordained verse 4 we're reading to verse 5 what is man that thou art change mindful to passionate ready what is man that thou art passionate not the son of man that you prove you are passionate by doing what visiting him you leave your throne you are not even considering whether people will say how about god you are too big for this childishness he said no problem say whatever you say about me i am in love with that man and the first dimension is my passion i am not ashamed let's go back to our world of proud and arrogant people where a guy claims he loves a lady but he is still protecting his vulnerability you are not passionate you are not in love where somebody claims he loves a business he loves his idea i love this i love that i am a businessman and you are not serious i don't see you wake up in the night to read any book i don't see you go for any seminar you are not passionate you do not love it the first dimension of love is measured by your passion and your passion measured by your willingness to pursue without being embarrassed anything that shame will not let you pursue don't even start shame and love doesn't go hand in hand no matter who you are in the world of god's idea of love you must be willing to throw shame down to pursue a person an idea or pursue god when we were sitting here and the worship team were praising i saw a jimmy got up and he was dancing unashamedly is a proof of passion is that true listen be careful whenever someone says he loves you or she loves you or you think you love someone before you make a shipwreck of your life because of ignorance ask yourself question number one am i willing to be vulnerable enough to pursue I have loved you with an everlasting love and my everlasting love was demonstrated by my being mindful Lord there are many things to distract you in heaven 
the beauty of heaven the throne room the four and twenty elders and after he watches that orchestra in heaven all of a sudden they find god thinking and the elders can wonder god what again and he says man scene two here is the stubborn and careless man roaming around trying to make a, a an image and bow to him and the angel said george now george god you are wise and he says no i'm not ashamed that as great as i am god is a weak point man has gotten this is god listen don't ever marry anybody who doesn't have this thing i'm telling you big manism and passion cannot go hand in hand show me what wakes you in the night and i know whether that idea is worth your love what wakes you up you snore by 10 and wake up by 11 say i'm an entrepreneur it's not for you it's very clear that you don't have passion for that thing you can try other aspects of life lord i love you and you are praying and then fall asleep and sleep for 10 hours no when you are mindful of anything there is passion there is god helping us tonight learn this this is the spirit of wisdom speaking to you we use words carelessly and do not understand the gravity of what we are saying lord i love you he says which dimension is that dimension number one i love you i am passionate towards you i am not ashamed of my vulnerability oh david showed us what passion was he danced before god and the wife said uh -uh, oh king again were you not trained well david said god that took me from the backside i should not dance before him god had it and god said you dare not stop anyone who is passionate about me number two what is the second dimension of love commitment write it down the second dimension of love there is no love i've not defined love oh we are just describing the dimensions love is commitment everybody shout commitment. commitment do you know what commitment is commitment is the willingness to give your time the willingness to give your energy the willingness to give yourself to something or someone you believe in is called commitment the willingness to give your time the willingness to give yourself passion talks of pursuit the unashamedness to remain mindful of a thing but commitment talks of the staying power brothers and sisters there is no emotion to commitment commitment is a product of your belief in a thing staying power based on the fact that you believe so you can see a believer being persecuted and they are going to set fire on him and he's willing lord i remain with you denounce jesus christ or die is is there any pleasure there no sir listen to me commitment is a state or quality of being dedicated another synonym for commitment is dedication I know how committed you are to a person or a thing by dedication I wrote a definition that when I finished writing I finished writing it I just leaned my head and I took a deep breath and I said God this is serious hear this the third definition of commitment is an engagement or obligation that restricts freedom of action hi you must write everything let me say it again an engagement or obligation to someone or something that restricts freedom of action look at this kind of dangerous definition so there is a restriction that commitment can create to your life hmm. the love of God constraints constraints there are actions that are restricted 
because of commitment you have options you can sleep you have options you can travel you have options you can go for vacation but your commitment for your vision because you believe that if you are committed to that vision your children will eat from it so you stay and they look at you and say ah david damn what is this that you are playing the keyboard 2 a.m 2 a.m you are tired you say it's true it's obvious your eyes are teary but something else has obsessed you more than the discomfort you are having commitment there are many believers who are not committed to anything there are many young people who are not committed to anything and anyone we run away from commitment i'm a member of koinonia but i don't want to join any workforce that's how i am do you know why because the restriction that commitment brings is what we are afraid of restriction is god blessing us number three let's hurry up the third dimension to love when we get to the fourth dimension you give us that scripture again in ephesians the third dimension to love is pleasure write it down if you must manifest true love it must be captured this dimension pleasure what is pleasure delight gratification there must be delight there must be space for gratification what is pleasure the satisfaction derived from what is to one's liking it cannot be a war of pain and regrets and fighting and pursuit indefinitely no there is a dimension to love that is defined by pleasure psalm 16 verse 11 let me tell you something that is very interesting about love personified here's what the bible says 16 verse 11 psalms are we there it says thou will show me the path of life ready in your presence is what fullness of joy and then he didn't say in the hand of a 24 elder at your right hand are what for how long if your definition of love is all about pain and fight and it there is no capture of the dimension of pleasure then you are not defining love based on God's terms is God speaking to us yes whether it is a love relationship whether it is a business relationship I should come and see you working on a difficult project with a smile on your face and I should say ah, ah, but I'm aware this thing is hard you mean you have to count these things one by one and there are five thousand of them and you say even me i don't know why this thing gives me joy my brother continue that's a sign that there is love there there are many things we do and we are angry and frowning at it relationships career even work with god brothers and sisters do we not rejoice after we love god we celebrate miracles here in his presence he makes sure that the dimension of delight is featured in our serving him is delight and pleasure featured in your idea of relationship there are husbands and wives there are people in relationships where there is completely no joy and laughter and delight at all there may be passion there may be commitment but there's no delight no jokes no laughter especially for we who are very visionary people it's a side effect that comes with being visionary sometimes we can strangle every iota of pleasure from our lives i have found myself many times being unfair even to myself in this regard because of the enormous responsibilities that i have over my life and over people i'm always thinking but the Bible says even God laughs from his throne. Are we together? The Bible says laughter doeth good like medicine. Pleasure must be captured. There are times that I've been involved in ideas, involved in things, and I've enjoyed the beauty and the joy of triumph. 
your business should make you laugh one day your pursuit of the anointing should make you laugh one day if you continue being angry indefinitely it can be a voice that this thing is not for you there must be a time of laughter your relationship must give you laughter one day no sir from january last year till january this year you have been meeting with the lady or the guy no laughter no feeling of relaxation and happiness what 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 sort of a, a... <laughs> i'm not i'm not i'm trying to be very careful so i don't double directly into relationship issues are you deriving satisfaction from your pursuit now let me tell you something if there is no pleasure in what you are loving you will feel cheated if there is no pleasure if i sit down and i'm doing ministry as god has anointed me to i there are pleasurable moments in ministry people sow into my life people bless me i have the privilege of enjoying honor you all love me and respect me so much and i'm deeply grateful for that those are the fringe benefits is the pleasure dimension of love i love god with all my heart i've seen his favor upon my life i've seen him shower me with blessings that if he never blesses me again i am deeply grateful there must be pleasure captured in your idea of love this is a challenge to visionary people this is a challenge to spiritual ladies hello spirituality is not an insult but we have found ourselves victims there are sisters that are spiritual they love god they don't know the inconvenience they are creating they strangle this third dimension of love intentionally as proof they feel so ashamed when there is an atmosphere of relaxation there are believers that frown at dinners there are believers that frown at any opportunity to relax and do this no no don't do this there are more important things they say is wrong there are fathers that will not allow this incorporated in their family there are mothers that will not allow this incorporated oh we just feel like getting two chickens just to cut no occasion see that's why it's part of my reservation about things like valentine because they are not exactly sincere most of the things that are done around this period are just emotions they are not revelations so someone that had no there's no iota of being nice suddenly changes for two days or four days that experience should not be desired because it will not continue am, am i against valentine no no do your thing but i'm just telling you that this is the revelation there is a pleasure dimension to life that's the reason why i came to serve god i came to preach in koinonia i didn't come to drink water however they know that there is a dimension of love that must be captured and they kept me a bottle of water how grateful i am for this hallelujah there are believers who don't know what the bible calls the joy of salvation say it after me the joy of salvation brothers and sisters there is joy in salvation if that experience has not been featured in your life vet what you did that you called born again or vet the atmosphere you are submitting your spiritual understanding to i detest a life that is just full of passion and commitment and then pleasure is not captured how about schools that flood children alone there's no opportunity they are either reading or serving punishment that's how many of us were raised that's how many of us were raised our families did not have provision you are sleeping you are praying you are reading or you are walking break time they give you 10 minutes now it looks like it's a nice thing but it's destructive go and ask the most productive people and corporations they create scenarios and force the people to have times when their minds can relax is god helping us capture this capture this 
they met jesus with little children as visionary as he is and then the serious disciples say abba jesus you are soon to die remember all of this this and jesus mm, please carry your let the little children come to me and do not forbid them for such most adults who say these are children please jesus let's focus on what matters jesus said i don't know what you are talking about there was a time they saw him with prostitutes and people he was not preaching he was eating with them cracking jokes and laughing if this is not featured in our lives somewhere we are missing it men of god listen to me spiritual brothers and sisters listen to me your service and your spirituality should not strangle the trouble becomes when your entire life is defined by pleasure your whole life revolves around the impulses of pleasure you are back to the feelings we are talking about yeah na 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 yeah na 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 hallelujah i was told the other day that the worship team went for an aerobic session i was so blessed you would think all they do is to pray there was a time i think the prayer department were having was it a seminar or something like that and that's why after service you should not stop people from those brief moments where they are ah, how are you that's why we crack jokes in the middle of the service even if it's a miracle service doesn't matter whose problem you have your medical reports but talk to your neighbor tell them i love you say god bless you that's why after service i say hug someone and say something some of you as soon as the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god you frown your face you go and stand outside listen i respect your commitment to vision but you are robbing yourself and god and your environment of this dimension of love friendliness this dimension let's hurry up number four if god is helping you say amen, amen. the fourth dimension of love is sacrifice sacrifice the length the breadth the height the depth of the love of god it is these compositions that make the fullness of god's love what is sacrifice giving up something you consider valuable for the sake of someone or a better cause giving up something you consider valuable for the sake of someone or a better cause giving up something you consider valuable for the sake of someone or a better cause you must give up something if you want to fulfill the last dimension of love sacrifice talks of constraint sacrifice talks of inconvenience very uncomfortably sometimes sacrifice talks of pain hmm. a language our generation does not know again pain constraint the inconveniences that if need be you may have to go through because of someone or a cause that you consider to be nobler please look up i have mentioned four parameters ready what's number one passion what's number two commitment what's number three pleasure what's number four sacrifice sacrifice is sacrifice featured in your idea of love love for your vision love for your assignment brothers and sisters we are all happy right now enjoying what god is doing here but how many of you know that since as early as maybe sometimes seven in the morning work is already going on in cgc here prayer department members came by uh, four four o'clock praying for at least one hour for this meeting the worship team here several people you came and found seats arranged already you came and found the seats clean sometimes during the rainy season you see the pain as soon as you share the grace you are going to hug one another and go back every week 
I leave this place past 12 the next day past 12 because I have to spend an extra one or two hours standing the moment I come for koinonia I sit down only for a few minutes once I get up standing it is until I leave while you are sitting I'm standing sometimes during the workers retreat I am standing from at, at about nine sometimes till evening or night and afterwards I may still have to counsel people and go back show me your sacrifice as a proof of love show me the sacrifice you are doing for that sister as a proof that you love her show me the sacrifice you are doing for that brother show me the sacrifice you are doing for your wife your husband your children if there is no sacrifice there is no love love is measured by sacrifice not sacrifice alone but it is an index i look at parents and i see how they care for their children i look at other parents i see how irresponsible they are over their children oh we need school fees or we need something uh, sorry i need to do something and they say i love you no sir lord i love you and then you want to give offering you came with two thousand you remove hundred naira and return it back you remove 50 naira and return it back then you remove the old 20 naira and god is watching saying is that what you call love sacrifice these people are standing every single one of them i'm here preaching you are here enjoying and male and female they are standing if we stand during koinonia vigils they are standing when they get tired they go back to rest a bit some of the people come sacrifice believers don't understand the language of sacrifice every little inconvenience there's no ac there's no this there's no this sacrifice the sacrifice of waking up in the night whether it's convenient or not to pray the sacrifice to pursue and study the sacrifice to delay gratification with your finances god gave you one small one or two million instead of blowing it to live a fake life you say let me pay the price and sacrifice this so that my children will eat what i did not eat sacrifice how many selfish parents i'm sorry to say it with all due respect they saw the future of the children they saw their present they would have paid a price some of us would have been happy now but they chose their belly at the expense of a generation they had the opportunity to have bought the land in 1964 1974 just buying the land without developing it instead of going for one polo club competition they would have used that money to buy the land that single land would have been over 100 million today and they would have been able to train everybody empower their young men support their sisters but selfishness and they look at you and say children i love you no wonder the resentment rises in many young people for their parents there is no sacrifice you hardly will hate someone or a thing that sacrifices how many leaders claim they love their people how many pastors claim they love their members there is no index to measure sacrifice everything that is an inconvenience goes to the members the convenience comes to the pastor no sir a true shepherd lays down does not walk on his sheep lays down what are you laying down for your wife what are you laying down for your husband what are you laying down for that come darling for that lady you want to get married to what are you laying down for the guy you want to get married to his birthday is coming well let me put something small you call him hello sir your your birthday is coming can you give me the money to cook for you is that sacrifice is that sacrifice that sacrifice how many of our parents claim that they love a student or they love whatever they come into a city where you are there carry out a business transaction cannot even drop a small envelope is when they leave they say I came there there is no sacrifice sacrifice is not about convenience 
so do not expect it to be convenient there are times both for God and men it will inconvenience you ask any married man there are times you are in a straight betwixt between your child's school fees and another equally important thing but you may have to lay it down bless God for some of our mothers that will not buy one wrapper for five years so that their children will eat now that's love to me bless God for some of our fathers who would rather park the car and not take 400,000 to buy a new gearbox he says that 400,000 can sponsor my children let me send them to school not so that they will feed me back when they are graduates that's investment that's not love are we together our generation does not understand the language of sacrifice sister let me tell you you are not a good wife if you don't understand sacrifice unfortunately you know i love our sisters but there is a deception that is looming across the horizon where many ladies believe everything about relationship is all about their pleasure and enjoyment anything that has to do with a little sacrifice they frown and revolt and rebel no how about brothers who think because you are a celebrity figure because you are this you are a graduate you are working in an oil and gas company and all these things are happening you want the lady to worship you forever because you are this somebody is lying to somebody somewhere sacrifice sacrifice how many businessmen cannot make sacrifice for their future how many young men i look at some not, not necessarily here i look around and i see young people that i know don't have anything much i see what they are wearing i watch their shoes even a millionaire is not wearing that kind of shoe and i ask them what do you have in saving them nothing and that person wants to marry and that person is looking at a lady he loves or a guy that he loves how many ladies carry their future and use it to make themselves beautiful today no sacrifice people are poor not just because the devil is powerful this sacrifice is what we lack in our generation hallelujah you are considering a relationship or you are considering marriage or you are married please don't go into it it's not a sin be ready for sacrifice first there are men who will come back with salary and ask their wives my wife can can you give this person twenty thousand? whereas you have your own one million let's tell ourselves the truth and it starts from relationship sacrifice these four dimensions are the dimensions that spell love give us ephesians chapter 3 again ephesians chapter 3 let's hurry up verse 18 that you will be able to comprehend with all the saints and that includes the family of koinonia what is the passion and the commitment and the pleasure and the sacrifice dimensions that are involved the bible calls these dimensions the fullness of the love of god i want you to look at this carefully which dimension so when you say brother i love you or sister i love you or destiny i love you or jesus i love you my question again is which one of them all of them jesus i have pleasure towards you and the things you can give me he says wonderful how about sacrifice for me how about commitment for me no i don't have those ones let me show you a secret brothers and sisters that will give you an opportunity to enjoy your marriage your relationship your vision whether you are born again or not if you subscribe to these four templates on anything you will succeed in it it's true some of the best i've studied some of the top business entrepreneurs around the world this they subscribe to this template they may not acknowledge jesus don't just look at their results look at their passion 
look at their commitment look at the pleasure they derive from what they are doing no matter how cumbersome and then look at the sacrifices I, I studied one one particular businessman and when I saw what that guy went through I said compared to what he went through I still think that the world still should reward him his name is Nikola Tesla Tesla is one of the genesis had about 700 patents to his honor he lived a secluded life of sacrifice creating the inventions today that we accredit to different people it was the product of the pain of that man didn't get married in his life didn't do a lot of things began to research many of, he was light years ahead of humanity and he died living his blessing sacrifice I watch Miles Monroe's videos great mentor in life and in death I see how that that man cheated death he's long gone but his wisdom still guides us there is illumination the touch from his experiences guide us towards a great destiny what are you willing to lay down for the anointing you claim you want what are you willing to lay down for the kind of lady you are praying for what are you willing to lay down sister for the kind of husband you are praying for it is free but it's not cheap you must be willing to lay down something lord i want a visionary guy i want somebody who loves god god says they are all available let me see what you are willing to lay down can you lay down the time the ego the inconvenience will you be able to submit to such a man with gladness as one who is worthy of your honor for his paradigm Oh Lord, I have my own ego. I don't want to be cheap. And God says, all right, go and find men who are like you. But if it's my son you want, you must be serious. Oh Lord, I want this lady. Beautiful, gorgeous, whatever parameters you use. And God says they are available. But gentlemen, let me see what you are willing to lay down. A lady who is that virtuous deserves a responsible man. A lady who is that virtuous, God will tell you, deserves a blessed man. If you consider that lady to be priceless enough, then you must rise to the occasion. We have this pride in our world that all fingers are equal. It's a lie. That includes human beings. Sister, there are some kinds of brothers God will never give you the way you are. It's not a bad talk. It is true. God is not a fool. He gave unto his one five talents. Two. This is God oh, who is not unjust. God is not unjust. But he gives one five talents. I talk to brothers. And sometimes when I hear brothers, I ask them question, what kind of sister do you want? When they describe that lady, I look at the brother and I know he's joking. I already know his prayer will not be answered because God is not a fool. If you want the level of qualitative sister you are making for, you, because God will not yoke people unequally. No, sir. Lord, I want a ministry like Benny Hinn. And God says, really? Are you willing to do what Benny Hinn is doing? That for two weeks he can close himself and nobody will see him. At the beginning of a new year, the first seven days, nobody sees him. Drive fast, he's alone with God, accessing power. Don't let the suit deceive you. If you want to marry Benny Hinn, you must be able to be like him. Otherwise, you'll be unequally yoked. You will carry pleasure into the relationship. And Benny Hinn will say, you love that Benny Hinn came from this secret place. It's amazing how people revolt when they see the demands for their desires. I want prosperity. Oh God, I want to be blessed. I'm a millionaire in Jesus' name. And God says, no problem. Millionaires from me must be able to say yes, sir, to every instruction I give. Agreed? Yes. Give the only one million in your account. I said, God, I don't understand. He said, you had me. You want me to bless you. You want me to talk to someone else who is like you. To send 10 million to your account. Prove to me you are worthy to be my treasurer. By answering me every time I speak to you. You would think is the kind of Abraham's test that God will say, stop. Till your internet transfer does send is gone and then your balance is one naira or five naira and you would think god will talk to the person to send it back it's gone 
and brothers and sisters two months after that giving you feel like dying and you say lord but i'm not lazy it took me three years to save this one million and the heavens become silent you think god is not watching he's looking one day this god one day you are sitting somewhere that is not your business and someone will come and say there is a contract somewhere um do you have a company yes i have but we are not what do you do i sell clothes leave clothes Jare, come and he gives you something and all of a sudden millions enter your account and people say it's not fair say go and ask him what is not fair about it don't be angry when you see god lifting people find out what they are doing the blood that drips from their altar is what attracts the attention of heaven when you see a man of god sometimes you people just hear me talk oh the power of god is this and people are shouting it's not magical my brother find out what my secret place is don't don't claim i say it he is grace but we are not stupid there is a sacrifice on that altar you see don't just think you get up and touch somebody because the bible says bless no there is a sacrifice we honor jesus among other reasons because he hung on that cross brothers and sisters i hope you know there was no covering around him it's just films that put it because children will be watching too that 33 year old man was hung naked on the cross his only covering was blood he would have stopped it but he said this is the price for that throne so don't you dare insult that throne that's why every demon must answer when you invoke the power in that throne you don't know what he went through The highest and noblest expression of true love is sacrifice. It's not the only one, but it is sacrifice. Pray one minute over these four things. We are still going to continue. Pray while you are seated. Please pray. How nang Allah. She never been in Salama. She never been in Allah. She never been Salama. Pray, Lord, give me the grace that passion be captured in my definition of love. Let me be passionate about something. Let me be passionate about my wife. Let me be passionate about my husband. Let's be sincere and tell us ourselves the truth. Are you passionate about the business? Are you passionate about God? Are you committed to the sister? Are you committed to the brother? Or you just want to marry? You want to exit bachelorhood? You want to exit spinsterhood? And you are so selfish that you are not looking to see that you are actually capturing these dimensions. How about pleasure? pleasure your life must produce pleasure to your spouse your life must produce pleasure to your parents to your leaders to your office to your company you can't just be taken your life must produce pleasure to God yes all men are not perfect but your life must produce pleasure to God Finally, sacrifice. Pray. This issue of having it at my terms. Ladies, pray. This issue of having it at my will. No, sir. It can't always be the way you want. Life is not like that. Go and ask any married man. Ask anybody in a visionary relationship. Ask every millionaire. Ask any great man of God. There are constraints. There are times it will not go your way. Don't take it personal. There are times it will not go your way. 
sacrifice. Sacrifice. Hallelujah. Sit down. What then is love? Seeing that love is not feeling. Seeing that love is not emotions. Seeing that love is not a beautiful face. A macho six pack. Seeing that love is not a jeep packed outside. Seeing that love is not the ability to cook well in a lady. Seeing that love is not even the prayer fervor of a guy. What then is love? For the rest of your life as you live, don't forget what I'm about to teach you. If you master this as taught by the inventor of love himself, higher than any relationship expert, higher than any consultant psychologist, this is God's perspective of love. Number one, love, true love is a choice. Write it down. True love is a choice. True love is a choice. It's an act of the will. True love is not feelings. When you believe you are in love, then it is a choice. Listen. Come to sin. The next time you say to sin, I love you. What you have said is to sin, I choose you. By the act of my will, I have chosen. Whether or not I think you are the best. Whether or not I think you are the brightest. Whether or not I think you are the finest chef. Whether or not I think you are the most beautiful lady, the most handsome guy, the most visionary, the most born again. Whether or not this business is the one that makes me become a millionaire fastest. Whether or not this ministry is the most anointed. When I say I love you, I'm saying I choose you. It's a choice. Any manifestation of love especially in the context of relationship and marriage that usurps the will of man is witchcraft no matter what vision you see about what lady no matter what dream you have about what brother no matter what counselors tell you in the final analysis your will must be involved otherwise it is not true love write it down love true love is a choice a choice to be and live with someone in the context of marriage when you say you love someone it is a decision you have made to be a decision to live with that someone not a decision to live with the person look up if the person is perfect not a decision to live with someone if things are good or bad when you say jesus i love you now you know what you are saying jesus i choose you i have gone online and googled all the gods on the earth and i've seen names that i was never told but i checked everything and i came to you jesus for whatever reason i've made up my mind to go god's way for the rest of my life that's love brother I've made up my mind to go God's way for the rest of my life. Pastor Alpha chose Annie. He made up his mind that as far as this life is concerned, this is the personality who will be with me. It doesn't matter whether he's happy with her or sad. It doesn't matter whether she's happy with him or sad. Whatever differences arise is not worthy enough to corrupt this decision. Brother, that's love. If you ever say you like a lady, make sure this is what you are saying. So, as I'm talking now, be checking what you are doing. Are you choosing the person for now? Or are you choosing the person? 
some of you are about to ask ladies this week next week listen before you go to anybody and say i love you ask a very clear question have i chosen you or are you just choosing because of your level of exposure i suspect emeka is a doctor i'm not yet clear so let me let me say yes to him while i verify if i find out oh i i thought he was the one actually it's another face so i don't love him again i love you i choose you if a maker says i know i studied um medicine but the lord is calling me and he's sending me to zamfara now your love is being tested you thought it was about a great guy who would be a consultant have his private hospital fly you around unfortunately you said you choose him many of us young people don't know what we are saying truly speaking when we mention this love thing lightly lord i love the assignment you have given me and then we sit down two years lord i said i love you and i love this assignment but i have only five members i have on, nobody's caring for me lord i'm on my way going after all i read this i can go and start extra morals and god says you don't love it a choice everybody say a choice say it again a choice ask anybody who has been married for a long time they will tell you there were legitimate reasons as to why they will feel they made a mistake in that marriage but every time they remember their choice that's why when you stand on stage with your wife they don't ask your father to answer for you or your mother to answer for you like rapture you stand alone is god speaking to us tonight because what i'm saying is very important i love you too much and god knows and sees my heart that i have an assignment to bridge the ignorance and the catastrophe that the devil is programming to happen between young people and young ladies many ladies who claim they love many guys have not chosen therein lies the revelation of these hilarious mood swings that fly up today and tomorrow a choice is a costly thing when you know the gravity you will not be hasty you will think well you won't say i am 35 i need to hurry up time is not on my side to choose that's why it matters who preaches to you to give your life to christ it matters what you are told if all you are told is that you come to jesus christ and all your troubles go away i believe in the victory of christ but brothers and sisters i've shown you the dimensions of love and there are times that some of those dimensions will cost you there are people who gave their lives to christ and they did not last seven days they knew that what they were signing up for was a bomb blast there are reverends in different parts of this nation who said i love you and with all the terrorism there jesus i love you and on sunday they had the sounds of bombs and they still got up and looked at their wives and said honey if i never come back let it be that i died for the one i loved and they went and were killed and never returned they got up that morning knowing they may die ha! who corrupted our definition of love and left it only to pleasure and that at our own times you may not like me for what i'm sharing but i tell you this this is the recommendation from the inventor of this thing a choice i've made a choice to serve god with all my life if donald trump calls me and says young man we want to give you a very noble position in america you're receiving a salary of hundred thousand dollars per month with anything you want do you think i'll run and leave you I know what some of you will do just hearing it although you are not the ones you will never come to church again you will go and cook food and bring for me and say remember me <laughs> though man forsake me still i will follow no turning back no turning back Though men forsake me, still I will follow. No turning back. No turning 
listen this work of the ministry you see me do is not because i don't have options brothers and sisters this man standing before you is, is a businessman i think i'm quite smart there are many other things i would have chosen to do with my life are we together yes but it's a choice that i will stand and communicate the life and the power of jesus i never came into ministry for honorarium do you know let me tell you god is my witness when i started ministry i didn't know they used to give men seeds and honorarium but right now you see every young man quarreling just because they call him into a small group to share something for 10 minutes and he finishes he refuses to go You call him, come and play keyboard in the house of God. A small church that the entire tithe and offering is not up to 30,000. 30, the person said, pay me 20,000 because you went to a music school. It's a choice. It's a choice. That's why we must take care of our children because they did not choose. We owe a responsibility to take care of them. Even if the couples make mistake with their lives, the children must not be victims of it. They didn't choose. Any relationship built by force and whose power to choose is taken away is an ungodly relationship. At every point of your relationship, the power to choose must remain. Listen, that's why those who abuse women are going to hell fire if they don't repent those who beat and when a man beats and slaps his wife forcing her to make a decision when a woman beats and slaps her husband forcing him to make it a decision when a woman manipulates her husband against his will like jezebel into doing what was not willingly decided that's not love is witchcraft every relationship and every marriage must leave the willingness of the personalities involved sadly this extends right now in the days that we live even to extended families where parents and in-laws attempt to choke their hands and manipulate the state of marriages if you must marry my daughter or now that you are married to my daughter you must live in london or you must live in this no matter what god is telling you these things are wrong love is a choice and everything around it must remain a choice now let me tell you this this is how god helps people especially when it comes to making decisions you can go to god and god will tell you son i gave you the will to choose whatever woman you want and you say lord i take that will back by myself to you because i am not sure of my decision i know how vulnerable i am so justified before heaven that you gave me the power to choose i have returned it back to you as a token of my trust and god says now that's it you have proven to me that if i choose a wife for you it is not against your will because you trust me that's the only condition where you will see the dream and trust it and the vision and trust it not just that you get up and see anything and stand up and blame god It's a choice. Number two. Hmm. True love is understanding the value, the worth, and the significance of a person. True love is understanding the value, the worth, the significance of a person or a thing to God to you and to humanity true love is understanding the value the worth the importance the significance of a person to God number one to your life number two and to society number three the second definition of love is love is understanding value when you pay fifty thousand dollars to buy a car 
you park that car in a special garage because of what it cost you to obtain it now watch this come are you ready to marry this woman and take her as your lovely wedded wife you said yes they asked her what of you yes two of you and then just because she should she did not she was not able to give you a child listen carefully first month of marriage no child second month of marriage no child or whatever it is all of a sudden you begin to make derogatory statements two men cannot live in the same house so what you are saying is i listen i do not see your worth i do not see your value i do not see your significance to god to me and to society true love is understanding the value of things so when you are doing that business you love that business only if you understand the significance of that business to kingdom advancement the significance of that business to your finances the significance to the development of your society if not don't say i love it why do i wake up in the night and study and prepare for every message and labor through the hours is because i love god is because i love you i understand what this information will do to your life will do to the kingdom will do to your children and your children's children never say you love any lady whose significance to your life you have not perceived let me tell you this look at me everybody if you have any measure of success before a lady or a man enters your life be careful because the more successful you are chances are that you will hardly see the significance of a man or a woman in your life there are successful women who are collecting three hundred thousand as single ladies four hundred thousand as single ladies they are traveling to embassies they have snapped with presidents there is every likelihood that they will be bad wives you know why because based on their experiences almost everything a man should represent has been represented in their success so when they say they want to marry a man they find out that when the man comes and says my food say your your, your what are you crazy i stay in a hotel with 13 towels and servants come and give me this and you are saying i should pound yam for you you are reducing me they say to a village girl the best recommendation for such a beautiful sister is remain single and support the kingdom yes you will be more useful to god it's true that's why paul didn't marry if paul married only god knows the version of pain that the church would have received the wife would have seen her husband less than 10 times in his entire lifetime are we together understanding value i watch relationships and i see how the ladies devalue the men because maybe they didn't read certain things or they have not become certain things yet and you see the communication of devaluation to the men that's not love love is that i perceive your significance in my life why do i love god or do i really love god yes i have seen the value of god in my life Aya, for without me he can do nothing so when i say lord i love you and i seek you i'm not doing god a favor by coming to church when i come to church his word cleanses me and gives me an understanding that programs me for victory it's not a favor to god are we together it is because Vashti did not see the significance of Ahasuerus in her life. So when he said, Vashti, come and flaunt yourself. She says, so I'm now a property. Now, I don't know what he has done, but she has forgotten that that guy is a king over 127 provinces. Brothers and sisters, let's not lie to ourselves. That's a great man. A man who is a king over 127 provinces deserves the honor of any woman who is wise. It's true. So she said well i don't know what you are saying you have money i have money 
you have the throne and have a beautiful face and he said off you go then it occurred to her that there are older options it was a choice to keep you the same way you say lord if i don't come for koinonia joshua selma you can't do anything and god will say okay i will raise somebody that didn't even finish secondary school and anoint him is dr paul Enenche that says god will use the calabash to disgrace the pot he will use calabash to fetch water so that the pot will see that that you are being used is not because you don't have holes it's because god is giving you a chance there's nothing called indispensable in this kingdom no there are wives that when they get married they don't care again not about their husbands not about anything there are husbands when they get married there are guys that when they say when a lady says yes to them that's the end of it there are ladies that when a guy asks them out and now they know that singleness is over people change and vacillate because there is no understanding please don't ever ask any lady you do not see her worth and significance in your life the danger is you will punish that dear lady and you will victimize her don't ever say yes to any man you know you will not be proud on based on the value it is painful to watch a guy do his best for a lady and she keeps giving an impression you are not worthy enough or a lady does her very best to a guy and he's communicating is not enough even God does not do that to you when he sees your sacrifices God acts as though he cannot do without you that should flatter you but it's true I search for a man a Jimmy the God of the heavens who made the heavens and the earth parted the sea with the breath of his nostrils is going around searching and that search came to a young poor small boy called Joshua Selman and he says can i use you to shake the nations god boy you can do without me i know i have limited myself because i love you i have made you valuable in my program that's god if you are married here or you're in a relationship you should go back and find what significance your husband your wife or your friend or your business means to you and to god i'm giving you a basis don't just say yes to a guy don't just ask a lady out don't just start business discern the value are we together yes i love our daddy here with all my heart i love him i've made a choice to love and honor him but i've also discerned the relevance and the significance of his authority his influence to my life to this ministry to the advancement of god's kingdom many of us do not respect our parents because we have not discerned when a woman is treating her husband anyhow what she's saying is i looked at my life and i've not found where you are valuable that's not a good thing when a guy looks at a lady and treats her like a piece of rag what he's simply trying to say is my dear i have not seen your relevance that's why it's dangerous to tie love to things like beauty and the rest because by the time she's 50 years old and she's not as beautiful as she was 19 or 20 or 21 when you married her now all of a sudden oh the guy was tall dark and handsome and now the guy is suffering from prostate cancer and he has to be relegated to a wheelchair and you are the one doing the pushing don't say job's wife did not love him now you know job's wife stood close to him she was frustrated she spoke anyhow but she remained there till he was healed now listen let me say one thing that is going to shock many of you we're rounding up the only part of love that is unconditional is choice mm. you know we say agape is unconditional love is true but let me break it down to you not every part of love is unconditional the choice to remain the choice to stay with your wife or your husband is unconditional but 
the honor that's going to be the third point that i will give is conditional your a man is not going to sit down and live irresponsibly and then expect every manifestation of honor that is accrued to greatness it doesn't work that way the choice is what should never change are we together god has chosen to love all men but he does not bestow the same honor upon them it is based on their alignment this is god let's finish the second point i love you means i understand the extent of your usefulness and significance to my life and destiny that's what it means that means there is no shame of being vulnerable Ejimi loves his daughter she's there taking water and enjoying herself and he's there well dressed she may pour water on his shirt doesn't matter he understands the significance of this dear lady there are people looking for children and God has blessed him and he's not ashamed to be vulnerable there are mothers here who were just a few years ago young ladies but right now they have to run to go and breastfeed their children and they are not embarrassed because they understand the value of the gift of a child please don't get into any relationship where there is no absolute revelation of the value of the person you are bringing in your life abuse is a product of lack of discerning value whether to a woman or to a man a man that beats his wife is not just an ungodly man he's a man who does not love her do you know why because he has not discerned her value if i told you this watch was for instance three hundred thousand, right i have placed value on it and say i'm wearing on my hands an object that is three hundred thousand worth of gold and then if i remove it and give you will you forget it on a chair please talk to me you will protect it your protection is a revelation of the value and what it can do to you that you can remove this watch and run to Kano black market and make over three hundred and sixty thousand from this watch and so if i give you you say thank you if sam tears a piece of paper from his book and gives you you may forget it on the ground that's exactly the revelation you give in the way you treat your children so when a man has five children and does not take care of them what he's saying is i don't think any of you will be useful in this life so there is no point being committed to your future value the keeper of israel he'll never sleep nor slumber he's watching over me he knows i'm useful to his kingdom the keeper of israel will never sleep nor slumber he's watching over me there is a law in this ministry anybody who is sick we make sure that within 24 hours latest 48 that report would have reached me and the heads of department alongside other executives try to meet the person in partnership with the welfare department if need be we send them to the hospital and as much as we can foot the bill we love them but the truth is we have seen the significance of a precious worker to the continuity of this assignment i will not be too arrogant to say without you god will still move i know he can still move but since he has chosen you then i must respect it i can't act as if your participation is not helping the ministry rise i can't act as if without you sometimes we do that thing we must be careful do not be embarrassed to communicate value there are people in my life who are useful I let them know there are people in this ministry who are useful I let them know have you communicated value to those who mean a lot to you both your destiny helpers and your enemies are in the same category in your mind there is nobody that is worth your understanding their value and their usefulness 
Number three, we have to round up. True value is honor. True love, I meant to say, is honor. It's first a choice, then it is understanding the worth and the usefulness of a person or a thing to you. And then true love is honor. What is honor? The recognition, the acknowledgement, and the celebration can even be the rewarding of that value that you now understand. It's not enough to know that a wife is valuable to you. No matter how much you love God without a woman, you will not be able to have another child, another life. So when a woman comes into your life, just because you put a ring in her hand does not mean you treat her like a piece of rag. She is the mother of your children. She is the reason why you are called Abba, Father. Wife, don't treat your husband or you are in a relationship, treat the other party. No. When they say those who are in a relationship, stand up. If you ever stand up as a lady, it's because somebody discerned you enough to ask you out and even sustain the courage to go and see your parents. Please don't take it for granted. Survived all the embarrassing things that needed to go through. And they asked him before the whole world, are you willing to take care of this lady? He said, yes. Most ladies don't understand that being a man is very hard. It's easy to stand like a referee and a commentator and a supporters club. You are supposed to bring the school fees. How about by now you should have a car? Let me submit to you. Being a man is hard. That's why the prisons are full of them. They try and try and try. It doesn't work legally. They jump a luxurious bus and they are caught. They try. The pressure that women put on men, put on their husbands, buy this, buy that, build a house, buy, they just name it. Because Nigerian film showed that if you love me, you must spend on me. Let's be careful. To be a man is a sacrifice. That's why Jesus didn't come as a woman. He came as a man. Now, I'm not, I'm not teaching some feminist thing. I have great regard and respect. But there are certain burdens no matter what human right movement is flaunting the earth there are some loads that only a man a man is a mystery is a system he's not just a masculine figure with a husky voice it's more than that he's a burden bearer any man you ever see that is paying the price to keep his family or keep a relationship please respect the person don't open your mouth and run people's families there are, there are men who don't sleep in the night when their wives are sleeping. Lord, open the doors for my children. Don't sit down and trivialize it. Love is honor. The recognition, the celebration, that's what Esther did. When Esther came, she knew she was a beautiful lady. But when Ahasuerus chose her for the rest of her life in that palace, she honored the king. Say, look i hope you know that you are choosing ladies if they were all fine what of me <clears throat> this pride will destroy your sisters please i talk to you from a heart of love when a man who is worthy of honor comes into your life and proves himself to be worthy of honor do not be ashamed to communicate that honor a businessman comes into your life and wants to advise you you have seen his result don't act like we are colleagues humble yourself and communicate the honor that's why we don't come before god and do big manism when it's time to worship him we can kneel down and roll on the floor and say lord it is you that gave me life ah, which who gave you life where your mother is there uh -uh, i know and god says you did this to me let the blessings come down the embarrassment of showering honor between husbands and wives wives husbands students lecturers parents children mentors mentees leaders is what is destroying people's concept of love i love you means i am willing to intentionally recognize acknowledge celebrate 
and reward your uniqueness and your usefulness in my life so if i say pastor toby i love you or promise i love you what i'm trying to say is i have come to terms with the fact that if you live my life i can't lie that i will not feel it that's honor and i'm willing to express it herein lies the pride that destroys relationships the pride that destroys marriage where husbands claim they can do without their wives where wives claim they can do without their husband when a company worker claims he can do without his ceo where mentees claim they can live without a mentor where a member claims he knows everything the pastor is saying honor the willingness first samuel chapter 2 and verse 30 i know the usefulness of the worship team to my life as a person to koinonia as a ministry i know the usefulness of the prayer department to my life i know the usefulness of all of the people that represent this ministry i know the usefulness of the media department to my efficiency in preaching i know the usefulness of all the people seated outside that's why we honor you by providing buses after service it's it costs us a lot but for as long as god grants grace we will continue doing it it's honor you honor me and you respect me very much and i appreciate because you have seen not just the significance of god in your life you have come to discern my usefulness and you are not ashamed to express it that's why you send the text messages of honor that's why you sow the seeds i wait to see you after service as tired as i am whether i've eaten or not because i honor you god gave me the anointing because you are there if you are not there the anointing will not come to me much more than prayer and fasting the anointing is only in my life because there is someone to receive so i can pay the price to receive it true honor is mutual i'm rounding up true honor is mutual write it down especially in the context of marriage and relationships true one-sided honor is selfishness and it is devilish the woman cannot be the one communicating honor indefinitely no a wise man must reciprocate back honor i honor the lord he honors me with his presence he honors me with results i can speak and say there's someone in overflow three and a long distance from where i am the angel of the lord's presence will honor that word spoken by a small man elijah honored the lord the lord honored his word true honor is mutual many relationships suffer many marriages suffer many business relationships suffer many friendships suffer because there is a one-sided communication of honor so come darling the husband sees the value of the woman showers all kinds of love like christ's church make sure that she's looking beautiful make sure that she's happy make sure that the children are well taken care of and then the woman takes him for granted after all is your right i didn't ask you out you are the one who chased me they say dangerous there must be a reciprocation the same way a woman is almost worshiping her husband like sarah calling abraham lord going out of her way doing things she never would have done to communicate honor and there comes the arrogant and pompous man beating his chest many of our loved ones that's how they humiliated our village mothers some of our mothers who came from the village and met a little father who had the privilege to go to school and he spent his life humiliating our mothers because he felt after all you were a village girl somewhere i took you and cleaned you and for that you will keep worshiping me for the rest of your life no sir honor is mutual lord i love you son i back you lord i worship you son i honor you my wife 
thank you for being beautiful and looking wonderful for me my husband thank you for being responsible to make me like this honor are we together oh my son thank you for paying the price you took first position you made me a proud father daddy thank you so much i have watched them drive children for school fees but you paid my school fees a session beforehand i acknowledge you there will hardly be any fight when there is a determination from both parties to consistently don't say i know it in my heart even god knows it. my brother men look at the outward appearance don't say i know it in my heart i love you means i am willing to celebrate your usefulness not just your uniqueness i am willing are you willing to celebrate the, the uniqueness of that lady you love that you are about to ask during valentine are you willing to celebrate the usefulness of that brother that god gave you you are seeing ladies trusting god for brothers you are seeing brothers trusting god for ladies you were not even praying and god brought a correct brother to you you are about to lose that brother because of lack of discernment and lack of honor god brought a nice lady to you you are seeing ladies giving men heart attack all around town and god gave you a nice lady with a meek and a quiet spirit and you are about taking it for granted a lady you can count hundred thousand and give and she says my husband thank you but i know that you have a greater need ten thousand will do the family take ninety thousand and do something with it as a proof of trust not that she pockets and keeps it and say this wicked man you have a lady that is that vulnerable to you and can mumu herself for you and you are not going to behave yourself and honor that woman like you would a trophy there is problem in our society we must learn we are going to pray tonight i know that our time has gone but this is what love is it is a choice a choice love is a perception of the value of god of men of laws to the usefulness of your life and love is the celebration of that usefulness don't take anything for granted in your life don't take anything for granted in your life you can take this finger for granted until the day there is a wheat load there and you find out that the pain from this finger will force your leg as healthy as it is from walking that's the day you will know that this finger plays a role men who are seven feet tall died because the small heart stopped walking your small heart you call it a great man can run to india because two tiny substances called eyes stopped working his hands didn't stop working but just because the eyes were not working it can paralyze the man could it be that what you are ignoring in your life may be the epicenter of your relevance and you ignore it anything you dishonor is authorized to live your life a husband may not live your life a wife may not live your life the person you are going out with may not live your life but something about them will leave you it's true i will teach you something next week we are not long there is a powerful the most important part of this teaching is what is about to come but i'll forward that for next week jesus grant us grace do we have something to pray about rise up on your feet tonight is a sober night i know it's been a challenging time for different people but i want you to remember everything i've said love is not feelings love is not emotions it's more than that love is not the tingly feeling towards a person or a thing no there are dimensions to love there is passion there is commitment there is pleasure there is sacrifice and then i define love for you as defined by god himself that number one true love is a choice number two 
true love is a perception of the value the usefulness a comprehension of the need don't marry until you understand the, the usefulness of marriage to your life to God's agenda don't have children until you understand the usefulness of children to your life don't bring a wife don't bring a husband until you discern their usefulness and then honor the outspoken unashamed recognition rewarding celebrating of that usefulness in your life lift your voice and thank the Lord for the spirit of wisdom tonight Jabragato sakata briada kata balada bosh Mandela kosa siyamara suyadaba Now you can say Lord I love you From the standpoint of the revelation that you have Lord I love you It's a choice that I've made It's a choice that I've made I'm passionate towards you I'm committed towards you I derive pleasure being with you and I'm ready to lay down everything if need be for you. I've made a choice. It is a choice. I understand your usefulness in my life. I understand your significance in my life. And I'm willing to celebrate you. No other God can tell his creature I love you. I don't take you for granted. That you love me. That you died for me. Hallelujah. Just one prayer tonight. Lord, break down my pride and in the, in the place of that space, create room for this revelation. Let it enter me. Go ahead and pray. Take away every pride from my life. Some of you, what I'm saying is hard on you, but it is the word of the Lord. It is the spirit of wisdom to your life. Lord burn this truth in my heart that every time I say I love a sister I love a brother I love my wife I love my husband I love my job I love koinonia I love the Holy Spirit let it be that I have an understanding that I've made my choice I discern the usefulness and I'm ready to celebrate. I'm ready to reward. I'm ready to appreciate. Hallelujah. Listen. Please everyone stand. When you reject Jesus. And you say I don't love you. You know what you have said now. I have the power to say yes to you. But I use my will. And I reject you. Number two. When you say no to Jesus. What you say is that I have not seen your usefulness in my life. I've seen the usefulness of a certificate, so I pursued it. I've seen the usefulness of a job, so I'm still dropping my CV, but I have not seen your usefulness. Number three, I do not think you are important and worthy of my worship and my acknowledgement. But I know that there are people in all the overflows and others following online who are saying, Apostle, I never knew that this was what loving Jesus was all about and right now that you have spoken I really want to run to Jesus to communicate my love wherever you are our time is gone whether you are inside overflow three you will walk to your projector stand but overflow one and two wherever you are I want you to run and say apostle I want to love Jesus I want to love Jesus genuinely where are they where are they where are those who are not ashamed nobody's closing his eyes make your way to the front inside or outside remember it's a choice no one can force you you can sit on your seat or you can get up and say apostle i'm coming to jesus it's a choice i have an option to say no i've told other things lesser things yes but i say yes to jesus Keep coming we're out of time keep coming I say yes to Jesus in pain and in pleasure I say yes to Jesus I'm willing to be passionate I'm willing to be committed I'm willing to derive pleasure from my experience with him and I'm willing to sacrifice all for him I've made a choice it is Jesus only and Jesus ever 
I've made a choice. I see your usefulness in my life. I've made a choice. I will live my life to honor you and bring glory. Like Esther did Ahasuerus. Keep coming. Let's appreciate them as they come. Hallelujah. All of you in front, those following us online, keep coming. God bless you. And then those uh, at overflow three. I want you to say this after me. Please mean it from your heart. I've told you what love is. And I want you to say it from your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you. I truly love you tonight I make a choice to hand over my life and everything about it to you and to your Lordship I make Jesus Lord of my life King of my life lover of my life Savior of my life from today and forever i declare that you are my lord the owner the manager of my life i declare that the power of sin satan the grave is over in my life i declare that jesus is my savior i receive your life i receive salvation amen keep your hands lord jesus i stretch my hands over these ones they have communicated their willingness to choose you above all mm. they have communicated their willingness to love you to serve you to live for you help that lady in the name of jesus satan you saw their decisions you heard what they said i command that your power be far from them in the name of Jesus Christ I supply upon you the grace it takes to live the reality of this confession I declare that eternal life is yours from tonight the grace upon you to live a victorious life I release it right now in Jesus name I declare your sins forgiven I declare that a new chapter is opened over your life in Jesus name amen and amen congratulations congratulations please follow the gentleman waving his hands all of you follow the gentleman they will um, just appraise you and grant you some information and then you'll be back to your seat let's honor them quickly